you've just come back from a trip. You did a survey of the types of trees on different sides of the mountain. And now for the best part, you get to put that data in a spreadsheet. And each one of these data sets, we're going to think of as a whole. And each of the types of trees is part of the whole. So we're going to create some charts and what you want to express what those charts is, what portion of the whole is each one of these trees. So the first thing that we want to do is we're just going to start with one of these tables. And by the time we're done, we're going to be comparing all of them and walking through the different types of charts that you have available to do this. We're going to start with west facing and we'll just do insert a chart. And it's done a lot of the work for you already. It's chosen reasonable colors that have enough contrast. It's already labeled all the data points and it chose a header for you. So what we'll do at this point is we'll go through some customization just to show you what options you have available. And we'll start off just by changing the header because if you're going to present all four of these charts, they're all number of species. So Google Sheets made its best guess of what the title should be. You could just double click in here and change it, but we'll come over to the right because this is where all the options are. And we'll change this to West Facing. For now, I think the best way to express this is a pie chart. But if we go to the Setup tab, we can look at a few of the other options. You could do something as simple as making a donut chart. It's another type of dessert. Or a 3D pie chart. These all present the data in a very similar way. So we'll keep it on pie chart for now. But maybe it's important to you to present the number of trees instead of the percentage. So Sheets just guessed that you'd want to see that the sycamores were 15% of the whole. And all of these sets of data that we have, have a whole. So in this instance, 680 trees is the whole and sycamores are 15% of that. Well, let's say you wanted to present just how many sycamores that was instead of 15%. If you hover over each of the pieces of the pie, you can see that it shows you the amount and the percentage. And let's say that we want to show that amount on the slice of pie all the time. We'll come to the customized portion of the chart editor and we'll drop down pie chart. In the slice label, which is what goes in the inside of the pie, we'll change from none to value. So it still left the percentages on here, but we'll say that's all right. It's showing the values inside too. And one last thing before we move from looking at one chart to looking at four charts together is that, of course, we want to accentuate the oak trees. Here in this channel, we have an affinity for oak trees. So let's go to the pie slice, make sure it's on oak, and we'll bump it out 25% from the center. The pie chart actually went over our legend here, so let's move that. We'll go to the legend and we'll move it to the left. All right, this is looking good. What we'll do, we're going to shrink this down because we want to represent all four sides of this mountain. This is the side that faces the west. And we want to insert charts for these other three tables, but we want them to be comparable. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to copy this chart. So I'll do keyboard short cuts of control C and then control V. And the reason why I chose to do it that way is so that it keeps all the same settings as the first chart. And then we can go into each one of these and then change the data range that it's looking at. So we'll do edit chart for the first one. The data range is here. We'll change that to the north facing table. Click OK. Automatically updates your data and each tree is still represented by the same color. So since we customized the title, it didn't update that, we'll make sure we do that. And now on the chart of the trees that faces to the east, I made a subtle change where I changed the order of the data to see what happens to the colors, make sure that they still match up. So we'll edit the range on this.
Slide over to the right. The birch is still blue, but the red now is maple and oak is yellow. So I did this on purpose as subtle things that you want to pay attention to if you have more than one chart is that you probably want the colors to represent the same things, right? And you can do that. So we'll go in and edit chart and we'll customize each pie slice where birch should still be blue. Maple on the other charts though was yellow. So we will change that back. I guess that's orange. Oak was red and sycamore was still green. We'll go to the last chart. So we changed out one of the trees and this one sadly does not have an oak tree, but with the color red and this being bumped out, it makes it look like it's still oak because it's using the same color. So what we'll do since the hemlocks only exist on the south facing slopes, we'll give that its own color. So the comparability is still here. When you look at the south facing, you see there's four different parts to the whole, but one of the parts, the hemlock, is different than what's in the other four charts. All right, so we have a pretty good representation here of what the composition is of all four sides of the hill. And then this brings us to a good point where we can illustrate another way to show parts of the whole, and that's with a line chart. So let's go back to the left. This is the same data that's above, but it's combined into one table because maybe it's easier to look at this data all in one chart, right? It's a preference. It depends what you're trying to do. But we will do insert chart. And Sheets, as always, tries to guess at what you want to do. And let's take a look at what it did. So in this case, we're trying to express what's found on each slope. So you want that to be the axis instead of the type of tree. So we'll come over to the right and we'll put a check mark and switch rows and columns. And that pretty quickly adjusted this chart so that it is showing that. And maybe this is a chart that you like. It does clearly show the different types of trees, but what it doesn't do is that it shows which portion of the whole these are. So if you want to represent each slope as a whole and then show what portion each tree is, we'll change column chart to a stacked column chart. And it switched our axis again. Let's switch that back. So if you're also trying to convey the message of the number of trees on each slope, this is probably the right chart. But if all you're interested in is the proportion, so of each slope, what's the portion of each tree type, you can change the stacking from standard to 100%. So this shows the composition of each side of the slope better, as long as you're not trying to also show the total number of trees because if you are, this makes every face of the hill look the same, but really some of them had more trees than others. So there's different charts to express different things. This one definitely expresses the proportion of the different types of trees better. And if you turn the stacking back to standard, it conveys the portion as well as the total amount. The next thing that we're going to do with this data about different types of trees is to show what's called a whole to whole comparison and talk about the different types of charts that work for that. Thanks for watching. It's been nice to have you along and I'll see you in that next video.